maybe I can, which meant that my bullet drop was going to, going to be, uh, oh, 15, 20, 25 feet, something like that, for that distance. So I pulled up and thought I'll just try to lob some up there and maybe I'll get some hits, who knows. Which I did, I fired, and I, I fired quite a bunch of ammunition at him. And <coughs> finally, he, uh, I guess I, I must have gotten some hits because he, he just seemed to have decided all of a sudden that he was going down and land on the water. Of course, it was a float plane. He probably could, he could expect to, to make a decent landing. I don't think that he knew how badly his, his port pontoon was. And he went on and, and he looked like he made a good landing until he put a little bit of weight on that port pontoon, which collapsed and, and his wing dug into the ground into the water rather, and the car plane, I mean, the airplane just cartwheeled like this, flew around and, and came to rest, going the same direction, but in several pieces. And uh, this part was, was broken off, half of the wing was broken off when the first went around. and. Uh, the, the three crewmen were in the water right, right about that position. And uh, I came up and went down and went by them. And they all waved at me and I waved back at them. And said, as I went by, I was, I was only five, 10 feet above them. And I could almost look into their eyes. I was so low. And then the other, the other three guys showed up about that same time. And we went around, our leader called, called our home base and said they had three survivors in the water and, and uh, asked them to send a destroyer out and pick them up. And they, they declined to do that because well, I don't know what their reasoning was, but uh, uh, where we were, uh, just off the coast of Norway, just inside the Arctic Circle in October, the uh, water temperature was probably not much more than, than just a little above freezing. And uh, these people in the water probably had a, a, a life expectancy of then, then of about maybe 15 minutes uh, before they died of hypothermia. 15 minutes probably being optimistic. But uh, we, we joined up, the four of us, and left and went back to the ship landed. That was, all that action took place in about, I'd say, no more than 20 minutes from the time we saw the first one until we dunked the last one. 15 to 20 minutes probably maximum. I wasn't timing it. But Looking back, that's about what I th think it was. We, um, I was, I, I was uh, kind of censured when we got back because uh, the, the people on the ship thought I, I shot too much ammunition. I never got to, I never got to talk to the people that said that. But my my section leader came and told me that, that 
and that's, that had happened. And, and I thought, a little bunch of dummies. You know, <laughs> they, they weren't there. They don't know what, what was going on. And uh, anyway, we, those are the only two airplanes that we saw the whole six or seven months that we were over there in, in uh, Europe. And uh, as I said before, we operated on a Scapa Flow in the Orkney Islands. And um, we did most, almost all of our work was up along the, east, the, the um, coastline of Norway. And this was the first time we really did anything the rest of the air group had gone into the um, beach. It was our torpedo planes, our dive bombers, and, and most of our fighters to escort them, <coughs> looking for a German shipping along the Norwegian coast. And they found, I think it was eight ships, uh, which they either sank or the Germans ran them aground. They, keep from being sunk. And in that respect, it was a, a successful day, but it was the only really successful day that we had the whole time we were over there. We didn't, I always thought we wasted our time, wasted my time, because I wanted to be out in the Pacific where the Navy's air war was. And, Kind of leads us to the next one, right? <laughs> uh, did I describe that all right? Oh, that was that was phenomenal. Yeah. So anyway, so now you want to be in the Pacific. You finally made it, and now you're contending with um, Japanese planes. So now yeah. you, that's a, a Hellcat now. Yes. Well, I'll. I'll describe the first two airplanes that I shot down out there. We were on a fighter sweep. There were eight planes on the sweep over Luzon in the Philippines. And we'd, uh, we'd gone up around Clark Field. There was no action up there. And we were, came on down towards going, heading towards Manila. And maybe, I don't know, how far, I wasn't even thinking about it at the time, but probably 25, maybe 30 miles south of Clark was this dirt field. I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's escaped me. But, <clears throat> and we came flying around it and I, I looked down this field and I saw seven Tonys. This is a Tony. They were all down there turned turned up at the head of the this dirt grass runway. And uh, I, I, at that time I was the, the section leader for for our squadron commander. And uh, uh, I called him up and and said, uh, KG, there's seven Tonys down there. Shall we go down and get them? And he says, no. He said, we'll just let them take off, and then we'll go get them. So, OK. And we circled, and we circled, and we circled, and circled. And they were shooting at us from the ground. I had a, got a couple of, couple of holes in, in my airplane from exploding anti-aircraft weapon. <coughs> and finally these Tonys started taking off. Well, uh, one, two, first two went, and I figured, okay, that would be squadron CO will take the first one, and his wingman will take the second one, and I'll wait for the third one to come. And third one got off. I'm out here like this. He got airborne. I came. Coming down from about 8,000 feet, I picked up quite a bit of speed, and I 
parallel this course out here oh, a couple thousand feet. And then I, I turned in, did a turn out I was trying to make a 90 degree shot at him. <coughs> and I fired, I had a little bit too much lead. I saw my tracers go in front of him. So I just dropped it back a hair <coughs> and kept shooting and he burst into flame as I approached. And then he, he turned into me like this and we, we passed, oh, I don't think we missed each other more than 20 feet. And uh, he was, he was um, almost completely in flames, and like this. And I, I, I lost sight of him, of course. And I turned and climbed, I figured, yeah, we haven't had an axiom, <coughs> I had a lot of speed. You only give up speed to gain altitude, and you give up altitude to gain speed. Those were your two best friends in a, in a, in a fighter plane. <coughs> so I pulled up like this to look, look back and see what was going on, and I, I didn't see this guy anymore at all. <coughs> My wingman was behind me, and I thought he was I thought he would take the next airplane taking off, but he didn't. He, he stayed pretty much with me. And, uh, but he saw this guy crash. And, uh, and I, I, I climbed on up, zoomed really, because I picked up a lot of speed coming down from 8,000 feet. And I got up and I saw another Tony coming from this direction, and I was about 6,000 feet, he was about four. And uh, I thought, well, I'll put him down here for now. <coughs> I'm just going to go over the top of him, and I'll roll over and just do a split S and make, a, make a, an overhead run on him. Well. He's, he saw me, saw what I was doing, and he, he was climbing, so he was a pretty slow speed. And, um, consequently, he, he could turn quite, quite easily uh, without taking up a lot of space. <coughs> so <coughs> when I, I came over him and started down, he, he turned around and turned around real f fast, and the next thing I know, he's, he's down here with his nose up, trying to get up to where I was, which he couldn't do because he was so slow. And I, I shot at him here, I, he had his, his nose was pretty much pointing at me, so I pointed mine pretty much at him. And I, I thought he was climbing this way, but he didn't have enough speed, and he was in a, in a climbing attitude that would take him that way if he had enough speed. But he didn't, he was really flying this way and, and uh, instead of this way, and I, I didn't give him quite enough lead, and I saw him I couldn't tell for sure where my tracers were going, but it looked like I was aiming for his engine and I was hitting the tail end of his airplane. Well, I pulled up, did the same thing, came around, 